everyone. I'm here with Jen, Chris, and Josh from False Advertising. We're here at uh, Brighton Electric uh, in the middle of the Great Escape Festival to talk to them about, well, about all kinds of stuff. A little bit about Lem Mania, but mainly about your old band. So you played uh, the Great Escape yesterday. How was it? It was amazing. Last night's show was so good. It was very, very hot, and we were all really tired, but that brought, I think, the best out of us. I think I play best when I'm super tired. Yeah, yeah definitely. It was one o'clock in the morning when we were on. Which is obviously that's hideous. Yeah, for a rock show, that's unusual. But it was it was great because the room just packed out, and we were like, we thought everyone would be done by then. You know, three days of music. Technically speaking, we were the headliners of the whole festival. Yeah. Oh, I love being a technical headliner. That's the best point. Yeah, the graveyard shift can also be the headline slot. What was the stage? What stage was it? Uh, oh, what's it called? Hope and Ruin. Hope and Ruin. Yeah, it's wicked. I don't think I know it. So what what do you guys do in the band? What Josh? What do you do in the band? I play bass. What do you do in the band, Chris? Uh, drums, vocals, guitar. That's a lot. And Jim, what do you do in the band? Drums, vocals, guitar. Yeah. And do you swatch, swip around, swip around, swatch around in the live show? We do that, yeah. Exciting times. Now, I tell you what, because you guys are obviously you're playing Lem Mania with me and tons of other excellent bands and also Road to Lem Mania as well coming to your town. And the funny thing is, man, because I was in a car with my drummer, Dan Cav, who you know, and he was like, dude, you got to hear this band for us. Advertising, I was like, fair enough. And he put it on. And I think it was Scars we listened to. It was the first track. It just blew me away. Because it's like, sort of, it does all the music. It starts like slow and groovy. Like the sort of 90s, like almost, I don't want to say new metal, but I kind of do. And then it goes sort of plinky plonky and thoughtful in the middle, like some of those indie bands. And then it's like full on punk. It's just got everything. And I was really into it. And then we met you guys at the show. How come you were there? Josh from Wolf Culture, who's a friend of ours, we've met him along our travels, um, was like asked if we wanted guest list, I think. And we were like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Wolf Culture, I'm a boy, shout to Wolf Culture. It was a super great coincidence because I think like literally the day before we've been listening to Scar and I've been like, these guys are fucking excellent. And then he turned up at the show and we got to meet you. Like, I couldn't believe it that like, oh, these are the guys, man. That was excellent. And then when I was talking about who we could get for Lem Mania with Matt, who does press for me. Does he do press for you guys as well? Yeah. He's, he's a good kid. He's just started managing us. Oh, say what? That's right. That's what I'm saying. All right. And he, I was on the phone to him about who we're going to get. And I was like, listen, Matt, I've got some ideas. And he was like, well, before you start, because he's a rude guy. He's like, I've got this excellent badge. You won't believe it. If I'm up north, they're called false advertising, like three-piece grind. I was like, I was literally just about to say false advertising which is great because we don't really agree on a lot of stuff so it was like a foregone conclusion so i'm super happy to have you guys on the show what's happening with you guys so you've just signed well you're working with uh, matt to do management tin what you got a new single out what's the new single called you won't feel love it's great i heard it on the interweb and i saw the video of the uh, sweetie yeah. melting what's the what's the concept behind the sweetie melting jen it ties into, well, we did a lot of pretentious thinking, or rather I did, and I'm, I was trying to convince everyone what the theme of, of our like new songs might be, and we decided that there's, a, there's an underlying tone about commenting on self-indulgence. So this is really pretentious, but like um, the sweet kind of makes sense. So, so there's gonna be a whole series of sweet things. Yeah, the sweet's being destroyed. Our last um, artwork for our previous single had a bottle rocket and like Coca-Cola going everywhere, which was fun and we all got covered in Coca-Cola when we shot that. And then, so we're gonna have things like ice creams melting, we're gonna have marshmallows setting fire, potentially other things like that. Is it is it out on a label or what's the crack with labels and whatnot? Are you gonna make a record? What's the deal? No, no, no label at the moment with, as we always have been, been releasing independently, um, but we have, recorded a bunch of songs and we're currently figuring out um, what and how um, we might put them out hopefully late, later this year and we're really lucky that we got given PRS Momentum funding to go towards it as well so tell us a little bit more about the PRS Momentum funding Josh uh, I remember Jen saying oh we've got some uh, good news I was like okay cool what is it it's like we've just been given a lot of money <laughs> by PRS wow and I was like okay Brilliant, let's talk about this properly, not on the phone. And then we, we went and talked about it. And we really tried a lot of times and, and not got it, um, but this is very timely. I, I, I mean, obviously they're looking at the validity of, of what you're proposing and actually we have 
a body of work here we can do something with so they're obviously thinking oh, man, now it's time and so yeah the stars sort of aligned in that regard yeah yeah for, for people that may not know prs is the body that uh, collects all the money that you get from your song publishing so if the song gets played in public or at a show or anywhere they collect that money from the songwriting royalties and then feed it back to the artist how can uh, other bands apply for prs momentum funding josh you will have to apply to be on PRS first of all, originally, for the Indeed. Online. And then you can literally just apply. So that's super exciting for you guys. I didn't know about that. Congratulations. Chris, tell me more about like how the band got together, WAP and there. Interesting. Okay, well, it is a long story, so I'll try and keep it short. But well, one thing I did want to mention was um, the early days, me and Jen started duetting acoustic. And uh, what was the song? Good luck. We did Good Luck. Good luck. Yeah. Painful. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, great song and um, very difficult to play and sing simultaneously, but we've, we got there in the end. So there was that, and then uh, we had another band with Josh in it, uh, with a drummer, and when that fell apart, we kind of, we, we me and Jen got back together like, we can't, we've got something, we need to crack, we need to do something. And we were like, well, we both dabbled in drums and we kind of both wanted to play drums. And so we were like, well, we'll both play drums. <laughs> That's great. And so that was kind of like before we'd even written a song, although I think Jen was already demoing some stuff. I was, I was programming lots of drums at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and so we were programming all the drums. We started demoing, we programmed all the drums, and then our good friends, the Hyena Kill, let us use their practice room and drum kit. Shout out to Lorna for, for that. That was awesome. Uh, we wouldn't exist without that uh, help. And we basically then learned drums by learning the programmed drums that we had written. Yeah. And that was that, yeah. And then, and then, yeah, that was maybe four or five years ago. We wrote a whole album before we did a gig, and then because we wanted to figure it out, you know. And then, and then, yeah. And then we got going, and that was four years ago. Yeah. 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 We didn't want to like fizzle into existence, did we? Like single here, drip feed it. Up, down, and we just go boom. Yeah. Page, yeah. Page, boom, you you can understand boom, the right temptation. Down, boom, no, everything. We've been in lots of bands, but particularly me and Josh. And you know, it's like five songs, let's gig, and like you're not. Formed. You've you've rushed your song writing process. We were like, no, 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 let's do this properly. <laughs> it was tricky because we were recording. We were in an awesome position where Chris had access to a studio, and um, it was very makeshift. The stu- we had a few a few SM58s and eight, one good microphone, literally one good one, uh, and a computer. No outboard gear. Very poorly treated room, but it was a studio. Yeah, but. Above, above. A pub, a pub, which sometimes had fights, which was scary. Um, but yeah, what was I going to say? It, 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 the temptation, I know, particularly with you two, to share what we were working on maybe before we were quite ready was was definitely a real thing. You were saying about, you know, that the temptation to just go out as soon as you've got five songs, do the gig and you want people to hear it against like taking, really taking your time and having a polished product and giving everybody everything at once either this is us this is our album this is our artwork this is everything and there's i i've always done it that way as well when i was in my first ever band the first version of what became ruben we had like an album's worth of stuff we rehearsed for like two years before we played a single gig and so when we went out yeah we were ready and we knew what we were doing and i think that was probably an advantage and similarly when i did my first solo record again i did like a whole double album did the whole thing before i told anyone what i was doing and then boom it was there here are the dates, here are the tour. But on the other hand, I think there's something exciting and thrilling about doing a gig if you've only got five songs. And maybe you have to play the first one again at the end because you don't have enough songs. I can see attractions of both ways of doing it. Look at Black Midi, for example. They don't even have like names for their songs and they're already playing KXP in America. And they're a bunch of kids and they're friggin' awesome. So, yeah. like, you know... Th- th- their energy. There's no rules, really. You know, you just got to find your own way. There's no rules. So, guys... You're gonna come and play Lemania 2 at 2000 Trees. Have you guys, have you played, Josh, have you played uh, 2000 Trees before? Never, never. I'm very, very excited. You're excited because it's a great festival, right? Have you been as punters? No, uh, I wish I had been. I used to do Leeds and Reading a lot, uh, but that, in terms of rock festivals, that was about it for me. That's, that's kind of how we met. We were doing that, the festival. We had friends in common, and so every year I'd only see Jen at Leeds for about five years. That's cool. I like that. Twice, I oh, did only go twice. to Leeds twice. I, I think, 
I think Trees is like that for a lot of people. It's sort of their yearly meetup and they hang out, you know, once a year at Trees. I think a lot of festivals are like that. I'm really looking forward to Trees and we've got the whole stage this year for Lem Mania 2 and loads of excellent bands. And three of these choice bands are hitting the road with me in Glasgow and London on Road to Lem Mania. So the week before Lem Mania at 2000 Trees, Road to Lem Mania is a couple of shows. Is it sort of on the way? It is sort of on the way down from Glasgow to London to Cheltenham and it's the road to it and we're going to have these guys and we got frauds and we got orchards as well. Tell me, Jen, are you excited about the road to Lem Mania? Yes, very <laughs> much so. I think we've only played Glasgow once and that venue, especially St. Luke's, oh my goodness. like I've never been there. Is it great? I mean, I've been to Glasgow tons of times. I've never been to St. Luke's. Is it excellent? I've looked at lots of pictures and I had a conversation with someone yesterday from Glasgow, um, from Health Musicians UK, who was like, that is like my favourite venue ever. Wow, so pictures and a conversation. I think this is building up to be quite a show in Glasgow, London. Listen, guys, thanks so much for coming in because you came in especially. You don't hang out here all the time. You just came in to talk to me. I'm super excited. I'm really glad to see you. And I'm, I'm happy your gig went well yesterday. And have a good drive back up to Manchester. Is it Manchester? And we'll see you on the road to Lemania. Thanks for advertising.